Recently in the UK, it's been around about 30 degrees C, or 80 degrees Fahrenheit. In the UK, this is classed as hot weather. And I don't just mean mildly hot weather. I mean really hot weather. On days like these, a lot of people go by the sea. And one of the reasons is because on the beach, we feel a nice cold breeze. The breeze itself is created due to the conductive properties of water and the land, respectively. Water is a good insulator, and so the sea tends to keep its heat, whereas the land is a good conductor, and so it tends to heat the air above it. This hot air rises, causing a region of low pressure above the ground. However, since the sea is a good insulator, the air above the sea remains cold, and cold air is at a higher pressure than hot air. In an attempt to rebalance the pressure, the air gets pushed out from the sea and onto the land, causing a breeze. But what is a breeze? Well, wind is made up of millions of particles flying through the air at speeds of up to 250 miles per hour. These particles collide against our skin, but unlike other particle collisions, they cool us down. Retrospectively, let's look at space shuttles during re-entry. The underside of a space shuttle is made out of a very special ceramic material to withstand the heat caused by these air particle collisions with the underside of the ship. If the ceramic plates were not there, the high speed of the air particles would cause the underside of the shuttle to burn up and the crew inside would be roasted alive. We can see similar collision heating effects from injuries from pressure washers, which use water to clean off dirt. The high speed of the water, when colliding with the skin, can cause burns and cuts. So why does a breeze feel cold? I mean, we've just given 101 reasons why it should heat up your skin. So why does it make your skin feel cold? Well, the thing is, it still does heat up your skin. The mechanism that produces the heat in all of these cases is the transfer of momentum onto the skin tissue of the host. When air particles collide with your skin, they will bounce off, but pass some of their momentum onto you. This momentum will, in turn, produce heat. Because air particles are so light, they don't pass on too much energy. But still, the heat created must be negligible, respective to the mechanism which takes heat away. So what other factors are in play here? The first factor is strongly related to something that we talked about right at the beginning of this video. Our bodies are big sacks of heat. And even though 80% of our body is made out of water, we are coated in a conductive skin. Our skins heat up the air around us through the means of conduction, causing areas of low pressure around our bodies. Low pressure air is air that is more spread out, and therefore low pressure air is a worse conductor than high pressure air. When the wind blows in, the low pressure air around our bodies becomes repressurized to normal atmospheric pressure. This higher pressure air is a better conductor, and since our bodies measure heat as the rate of flow of heat, this more conductive air makes us feel colder. But there is one final mechanism in work here, and that's diffusion and evaporation. It just so happens that one of the primary ways our body gets rid of excess temperature is by excreting sweat. Sweat is mostly made out of water, and it takes some of the heat from inside our bodies and transfers it to the outer environment. The sweat diffuses into the air around us, but what is diffusion? Diffusion is a natural chemical phenomenon, 
where two substances in contact or separated by a permeable membrane naturally tend to mix with each other. For example, say we have two rooms separated by a wall. One room is filled with nitrogen and the other room is filled with oxygen. Then we remove the wall completely. When we come back, the nitrogen and oxygen will be evenly distributed throughout the room. This is equally the same with water and air. After it rains, puddles are left on the ground, but the puddles never actually boil. So how does the water seem to just disappear? Granted, sometimes it is soaked into the ground, but more often than not, the water just evaporates very gradually. Every now and then, a water molecule in the puddle will obtain enough energy from its surroundings and evaporate and diffuse into the air. Well, if the air is dry. You may have noticed on humid days we sometimes feel extremely hot even if it is cold outside. This is because the sweat on our skin has a much lower probability of evaporating and so it's like we are bathing in our own hot sweat. Ugh. So what happens when our sweat evaporates? Well, it goes into the air, making the air around our skin more humid. This humid air decreases the speed at which the sweat evaporates and thus slows down the heat loss process. But if we add a breeze, the wind blows away the humid air, leaving the air above our skin dry once again. Therefore, the breeze keeps the sweat evaporating at its maximum speed. And once again, because we detect heat as the rate of change of temperature, it feels like the wind itself is cold. And that's it. So remember, if you want to be hot, just use antiperspirant, you'll stop sweating. And as always, thanks for watching.